you turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, good evening, welcome to the Bible study Friday night, it's a blessing to be back in the house of God to study God's word, it's a blessing to have a mind, it's a blessing to have a mind, remember old brother Cain would often speak about the mind. A mind, a mind. One time he gave an example. I don't know if y'all remember that. He says um, he had a mind at one point to lose weight. And he was like, I can l- lost weight. He lost a lot of weight. He said, but I ain't got that mind no more. <laughs> he was such a humble man. You know, he said, I ain't got that mind no more. <laughs> amen. But if, with, a, with a mind, amen, to be Look, saved. Amen. To fight the devil. Amen. amen to encourage ourselves. Amen. And to press the battle on is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And we're going to look into the Bible study tonight regarding the end of the world, and we discuss the understanding of it, the understanding, and we understood by the word of God that the world was not meant to be here forever, that God did say that it would come to an end. And then we looked at how would it come to an end, and just as God began everything with creation, he's also going to bring everything to an end. We made a clear point that God's going to end it, not man. Amen. He began it, and he's going to end it. And now we conclude this phase of our Bible study with the signs. What are the signs that the world would end? There are distinct signs that would take place, and we're going to define what is a sign, and then what are the key signs that this thing is about to wrap up. And I pray, saints, that you have discernment. I pray that you have discernment. And I pray those that tune in to the Bible study, you're going to need discernment. If you got discernment, and it don't take a whole lot of discernment, but if you got a little discernment, you, you'll be able to see clearly from the Bible study tonight that this thing is almost over. Those with an ear to hear, those that plan on getting saved, and that's our prayer earlier today, but this wouldn't just be a Bible study, but this would arrest somebody's consciousness. That this thing is about to wrap up and you don't want to be on the outside of the ark looking and wishing, I wish I'd gotten saved. While there's time, our prayer is that moves will be made, even tonight. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your goodness and faithfulness. We appreciate you, dear God, for your mercy. It endureth forever. Father, we pray that you would enlighten minds tonight. Father, that you would quicken, dear God, our very consciousness, increase our burden as we look into God's word and what is going to happen. Also, what we must be doing, dear God. We play a critical role in these signs. We pray, dear God, that you would just bless, rebuke darkness, rebuke the devil. Father, it seems that this entire generation, dear God, is actually greatly affected by these signs. Father, more so than any generation before. Father, dear God, we think about old Brother Finney and those brothers would just travel and they would preach a simple message and even Brother Moody, they would send you a preach. A simple message, dear God, altars would be filled all throughout Hampton and London and Birmingham, all throughout England. And then they come to America, dear God, in New York, dear God, farther down south, Lord God, on the West Coast, dear Lord, in the East, in the Midwest, dear God. Father, even as we go further, dear God, into the 60s and 70s, Lord, Father, the saints, dear God, would preach, my God, the gospel would be preached, a simple message, Lord God. And many times the minister could not even end the message. Father, altars filled. 
still, dear Lord, back in the 70s and 80s, Lord God, even early 2000s, hearts were tender, dear God. Father, much more than they are now, Lord. Father, we just pray you bless tonight. We pray you bless the study. Shake us, Lord God. Stir us, Lord God. Help us, dear God, that we may be ready. When those clouds split, dear God, it'll be too late then. Father, may we be ready now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Matthew 24, verse number 1 through 3, if you wouldn't mind reading for us. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and the disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? So here, the disciples ask Jesus concerning the end of the world or when would things wrap up. Now, let us skip down to verse number 36 to make the first critical point. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Okay, so the first thing we see is that of the exact time Jesus said, I'm not sure of that. Only God the Father, God the Son, doesn't know that. God the Father does know that. And he made that point clear that no man knows it either. Now, the reason why that's so important is because if you understand that, then you understand two things. Nobody, no man, no person should get up before anybody and declare when God is going to tell the angel to blow the trumpet. So we know that to be true. No man, no human being should ever stand before people saying on this date, at this time, God is going to tell Gabriel to blow the trumpet. That's false. Amen. That's false. Well, Brother Lee, what about the solar eclipse? What about it? <laughs> what about it? If any man wanted to pull to the solar eclipse, Somebody sent me some a link on that the other day. If, some, if any man want to try to use some type of solar eclipse or anything else to say that points to this date and this time, and usually when they do say that, right after that comes and send me all your money. What you, what you going to need it for if the world go in? Why you need it? Don't send your money to nobody. Don't do that. So we know that no man. But watch this. Read the scripture, Brother Frank. What did it say? But of that day and hour knoweth no man. Uh huh. No, not the angels of heaven, uh -huh. but my father only. Okay. So he says, knoweth no man. He said, not the angels in heaven. Then he goes further and he says, what at the end? But my father only. Okay. So that's letting you know that who did they ask this question to? Jesus, y'all know, it's Jesus. So he's saying that he don't know. Okay, let me go further for false prophets so no one would be deceived. Not only should no man stand up and tell you this time and hour, that's a false prophet. And then no man should try to use this. What do I have in my hand? No man should try to use this to tell you the exact time like Jack Camp and different ones try to do. You say, Brother Lee, why can't they use this? Because this is who? The Word. Come on, the Word. Who is the Word? Jesus. Jesus. So Jesus don't know he's the Word. It ain't in here either. You, it, this is Jesus. <laughs> He said in the, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. He's the word. So you can't have a man getting up telling you he know and no man can look in this and find out either. 
So no false prophet can use this and go over here and go over here. It ain't in here. This is Jesus. This is the word. And the word said, I don't know. So it ain't in here. So no human being should stand before people and ever tell them on this date at this time, and no person should use this. Use all the revelation you want to use. Go over to Daniel and Ezekiel. That's all the word. And the word said, I don't know. But the Father knows. Now, with this, what the word does know, go back to verse number three. And that's what we're covering tonight. Come on. And as, it, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, mm -hmm. the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the eight world? All right. Now, it says that Jesus goes and he begins to speak because they added a critical point. He let them know, I'm not going to tell you the time an hour because I don't know. But he did let them know because they asked him what would be the signs. That's different than telling us exactly when. So Jesus then begins to proceed and he begins to declare and enlighten, saying that nobody knows the exact moment. Nobody knows the time, but they asked him the signs. Sign in the Greek, semelon, which is indication. A sign, an object, quality, or event whose presence or occurrence indicates the probable presence or occurrence of something else. A sign is a gesture or action used to convey information or instructions. So Jesus did feel the liberty to proceed with, I can tell you the signs that it'll be though. I'm not gonna tell you when it'll be, and it's kinda like, um, we would go from Jackson to go and see our grandparents. And we would go through Jackson, go through Grass Lake, go through Chelsea, go through uh, Ann Arbor, Ipsy. And then we would hit the airport. And that was like, OK, we ain't in Jackson no more. <laughs> you know, it, it, ain't, it ain't much further, because they lived in southwest Detroit. So, and then we would get to, uh, I think it was this, wasn't it a big tire? Yeah, yeah big tire. What kind of tire was that? Yeah, Uniroyal. That, okay, now we've had, okay. And then it was a cigarette man. Marble. Marble, you it? Yeah, Marble Man. So now we get, okay, we getting closer. And then it was this school on the corner. What school was that? Boynton? The Boynton, yeah, Boynton School, right there in the corner. It's to unbuckle your seat belts, get ready, get, we, we right there. So this is what Jesus is now working with. He's saying that I'm not going to tell you we're going to be there. And it was roughly from our house to there, about an hour, hour 15. So he's not going to say an hour 15, I'm coming back, or hour 15, you'll be there. But what he did say is that, I'm not going to tell you on hour 15, but I'm going to let you know. When you get past the airport, <laughs> get ready. Okay? All right, when y'all see that big tire on 94, <laughs> be, be, be ready. When you see the Marlboro Man, I don't know if he just said Marlboro Man, but anyway, when you see the Marlboro Man, amen, <laughs> amen, uh, uh, we're getting close. And when you see Boynton School, we're right there. That's because he couldn't operate outside of his auspices, his authority. But in mercy, he wants as many as possible to be ready. Yeah, to go outside of his authority, he'd say, 
hour 15. So then somebody could be like, you know what? I'm going to wait to hour 14 and 59 seconds before I get saved. And he said, no, no, it ain't going to work like that. It ain't going to work. I'm not telling you that. You're going to go up here and cut up and go over here and do all this foolishness. And then, you know, in hour 15, no, it's not going to work like that. He said, but in mercy, God, it wouldn't be violating the principles of our agreement to let you know that some signs will happen there would be some indications that it's about to happen. And there are many things that he discussed. And we just lifted a few of the primary signs that he left us in scripture to let us know when the end should be. And to give you a greater thrust, thrust of of conviction. I want the audience tonight in presence and online to even consider your lifetime. Consider your life. When we break down the things from a biblical perspective of the signs of his coming, consider your lifetime and see if it doesn't produce a greater awareness that this thing is almost over. We're not talking about 150 years ago. We're talking things in these signs are things that have uniquely been enhanced in the last 20 years. 20 years ago was significantly different than it even is now. That should let us know that we're at the brink of his coming. All right, let us consider the first one. The first one that he mentions here is the days of Noah. Come on. Go over to Matthew 24. Now skip down to verse number 36 and 37. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, mm -hmm. no not the angels of heaven, mm -hmm. but my Father only. Okay. So he made the point, and then he goes back to their original question. He says, I'm, I'm in a safe zone. I'm letting you all know I can't answer your question directly with the time. But then he proceeds with a sign. Because remember, they asked him, tell us when or give us a sign. He said, I can't tell you when. He's answering the question, but I can't give you a sign. Yeah, amen. Let me give it to you. Soon as he declared, I can't tell you when, then he goes with a sign. And with signs is he that hath an ear to hear. Let him hear. He that hath an ear to hear. Verse 37, Brother Frank, right after he says, I'm not going to tell you when. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. All right. So here he says, as the days of Noah, they were eating, Drinking, marrying, giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. All right. So we see two things here. The first thing that we see is, and it looks like not much. What's wrong with eating, drinking? And marriage. Well, you have to understand, as Brother Clark, I believe it is, says, for the word here used for eating signifies eating after the manner of brute, brute beast. They indulge themselves in a brutish way in gluttony and drunkenness. And it is certain from the count given of them which we're about to read, that they entered into 
unlawful marriages and unclean copulations. Go over to Genesis chapter 6, verse number 1, and let's read. Genesis 6, the first sign that we have is compare the days of Noah to the days right before he's coming. Genesis 6, 1, come on and read. And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bare them children, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And he repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him to it at his heart. Very good. The key verse here is God saw the wickedness of man was great on the earth. It was out front and open not hidden, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So we see the first thing, as in the days of Noah, was unrestrained morality. Unrestrained morality. Unrestrained morality. Eating, drinking, in other words, gluttony at the highest levels, and then drinking, drunk, high, or whatever, constantly. This is what was they were known by. I don't know if I've ever seen or heard of a generation that is primarily known by unrestrained morality, drunkenness, highness, gluttony. Follow where we going with this. We were speaking, and you go back even 50 years or so, there was people that was doing various drugs. In fact, I was looking up, researching early Detroit, the days of the Model T Ford, so on and so forth, and they actually had heroin users way back then in Detroit. There was heroin users. So I'm thinking heroin came in the 60s and 70s and crack replaced it. Heroin been here for a long time. Follow where we going with this. Then heroin came stronger, you know, 50s, 60s, so on and so forth. Then you had cocaine, crack, came in the 80s, this and the other, which was strong. It hit every community, so on and so forth. But I can't find a time in human history in which the prevailing nature of the generation, the prevailing condition of an entire generation is like this. This generation was a generation consistently of drunkenness, highness, gluttony, just gone. It was so bad that God said, I have to do something about it. It's nonstop. It's not in a segmented area over here or over here. This identified the generation itself. That's why a lot of times where many of the apostles or, or many of the prophets will go and say, if I find this many, if I find that many. And God said, no, it, it's prevailing. It's prevailing. So the days of Noah was so bad that wickedness was prevailing. What am I saying here? Was talking, you know, I know the last 25 uh, uh, uh funerals or so that we've had here that were younger people, most of them, and I talked with them, and they said, Brother Lee, you don't understand. They said almost every single one of the young people that you've seen here that you buried, and this, this, and the other, so on and so forth, almost all of them got high. Not some of them, almost all. Then they went further, and they said, this generation, I know more, I know, amen, fewer people that don't get high. Then they went further, and they said that, honestly, I'm just letting you know, don't collect data no more. It's to find a young person that's 16, 17, 18 years old, 19 years old, that don't smoke weed, find one. If your grand, you may say, well, my grandchild don't. Follow them close enough. 
Follow them close enough. If you find one, it's a rarity to find a young person today, and I'm gonna be, and I hate to go further with it. It's a rarity to find many parents today that don't get high. I'm telling you, they don't get drunk, and I. It's the basic, amen, uh, representation of this generation. It's so. And this is deep. It's so bad now that it's normal. You ain't hear what I just said. It's so far gone now that it's normal. There is no stigma to smoking dope now. It's so normal now that most people will look at you foreign if you don't do it. This is what he was saying. I, okay, you got to understand the Hebrew word. He says, what did he say, Brother Frank? In verse number three, the last word that he says in verse number five. Come on and read. Verse five or three? Five, five, sorry. Thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Their imaginations, their thoughts, their wickedness. It said God saw the wickedness, imagination, and thoughts. It was a continual system. It was continually. It was constantly. It was everywhere. We are now living in a place in time in human history where it's everywhere. Changing laws, and I'll get to that later on, to, to make it convenient so it can just be everywhere, continually, at the schools, in the hospitals, on prison ground, it, everywhere you look today, there is drunkenness, highness, gluttony. It is constant. It is in the young people. It's not, and people say, listen to me, it's not a South Side issue. <laughs> I'm just being real with you. Don't y'all think that this is a South Side issue. This is in the hood. This ain't the early 80s when it was primarily crack here, cocaine over here. Oh, no, this is not a South Side issue. There is, and don't say, I'm going to take my child out of Jackson High and I'm going to go put them in Lumen. It's as much getting high in Lumen as it is Jackson High. If you don't believe me, go ask somebody that's been there. They may have a suits on and ties on, but go to the car with them when they go to the store. It's, it's at Northwest, too. It's at Western, too. You can, my God, try to take them to JPEG. Try to find a place. I'm going to enroll my child somewhere where they don't get high. Try it. It's everywhere today. It's, it's nonstop. It's constant. And let me tell you, go down to the courthouse. I'm telling you, go down there and talk to the judges. Talk to the attorneys. I'm telling you, most people that's involved, I'm telling you, it's hard to, I was talking to an employer from an economical perspective. They said I had to change our policy. Why? Because we couldn't hire nobody. Why? Because everybody dropped dirty. Everybody's involved. Everybody in the penal system, they all dropped dirty. It's everywhere. We've never seen nothing like this before. I'm telling you, we've never seen it like this before where it's everywhere. The police officer that, that hire you, he got a dime bag on him. The judge that sent you, he got a dime bag on him. <laughs> I'm just telling y'all the truth. It's everywhere. The teacher, the teacher can't tell you no because guess what he's doing when he gets home? The doctor that work on you, you better hope he ain't high <laughs> The pilot is flying your plane. I'm trying to tell y'all. We've never seen it like this before. But he said, nothing new under the sun. Just as it was then, it's going to be just like it is. It's in Europe, Africa, Jamaica, America, Scotland, Greenland. Now is a generation in which, and I'm just being real with you. When I was in school, those were the weed heads. That's how it was, seriously. We all knew it. Those are the weed heads. They were all rolled together. Now, it ain't no group of weed heads no more. I thought, and this really got me, was doing a funeral, this, that, and the other, went by one of the houses, all these young ladies. I thought it was a male thing. I didn't think in my mind, you little cute girl, no way, a nice, sophisticated lady. You don't smoke. You, it would shock you, these little girls. I thought it was a guy thing, like, you know, thug guy. No. Old, young. But thank you. I'm sitting there watching that, and they come and say, hey, but yeah, be careful now. Hey, you doing, buddy? How you doing? Hey, man, hey, what you got? Hey, man, I got some gummy bears. You want one? No. 
I don't want no I don't, no, 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 no. You like gummy bears? I, yeah, I like gummy bears. I do, actually, I do. I like gummy bears, but I'm careful now. I'm careful now. But Ali, don't you like chocolate? Yeah, here's a brownie. No, no, I don't want to. I don't want to. I'm good, man. I'm good. No, I'm good. Seriously, saints, they got candy now. It's just all over. We've never seen. But Jesus said, I'm letting y'all know. If y'all want to know, right before, it's going to be just like the days of Noah. When they was doing this stuff, rampantly, it's everywhere. Then it says, go back, Brother Frank, to Matthew 24, verse 30. Seven, he gives us his second point regarding Noah. One was unrestrained morality. America is a capitalistic society. And what that basically means is that we're driven by the almighty dollar, you know, and this prophecy was becoming so pervasive that states started saying, hey, we can't stop this. It's everywhere. It's nonstop. We, we, we can't give out enough tickets, weekends in jail. It ain't. So since it's going to just be here, let us get our cut. One of, my, one of my friends, but I know he feels terrible when he thinks of it. He, and, he was involved in that and ended up doing some time for it. And now my son get a job. And I'm just going to just say it because it is what it is. And he says, Dad, I got a job cleaning cars. This was before he was working for the state now. He said, I got a job cleaning cars for uh, Monster Motors, it's a, it's a car place. In fact, they sell like used vehicles. But they got a, a place around the corner in an old, like, old factory that they rent, that they take the cars in there. When they get them from a trade-in or an auction, the truck will come in there and they'll go in there and they'll clean them. And he goes and says, I've been there cleaning. He says, and one of the perks for working for him, the guy that owns it, he says, you get a percentage off. I said, what you talking about? He says he owns another business around the corner. That's a part of fringe benefits. Y'all don't understand what I'm saying? Before, they would fire you if they find you doing it. But now, he gets 4th of July off, he gets uh, uh, Memorial Day off, uh, and he gets dental, and he gets Vision and, uh, uh, and a marijuana uh, discount. <laughs> That's normal. He said, Dad, they so excited. He said, all the employees are so excited about this benefit. It's everywhere. If somebody come and get saved today, it's almost a guarantee that to get to victory over habits, is going to be something they have to deal with because it's just everywhere. It's everywhere. Look at this second thing that he says here. So America said, we want to cut. Come on. The point about my friend I was making was that he went to prison for something now that this man is getting rich for. That was the point. This man is getting rich, making much money off this as he is selling cars. <laughs> He's getting rich off what my friend went to prison for. That's because America said, hey, we can't beat them. Come on and read, but Frank. For as in the days that were before the flood, mm -hmm. they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Come on. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field. Hold on, hold on. Read that one more time, but Frank. And knew not until the flood came. And knew not until the flood came. And took them all away. Mm -hmm. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. All right. Now, go 
to chapter 6 for the second point in regards to the signs. Unrestrained morality. Chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. It speaks about, he said, I'm going to destroy the earth which he had created. Now go to chap, uh, verse 22. It says, what, Brother Frank? Thus did Noah, mm -hmm. according to all that God commanded him, so did he. So he preached the gospel. Chapter 7, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Noah, mm -hmm. Come thou and all thy house into mm -hmm. the ark. Mm -hmm. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. All right, now... Uh, he said, thou shalt take a verse two. Of every clean beast, mm -hmm. thou shalt take of thee by sevens, mm -hmm. the male and his female, mm -hmm. and of the beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. Mm -hmm. Of fowls also in the air by seven, the male and the female. Very good, skip down to verse five. And Noah did according to all the Lord commanded him. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood of the waters was upon the earth. Mm -hmm. And Noah went in and his sons and his wives, wife and his sons' wives with him into the ark because of the water of the flood. All right, so now the preaching is completed. God preached, Jesus preached through Noah. So Noah preached. Jesus was preaching everlasting gospel. Noah finished the ark, which they had never seen nothing like this. That was the preaching. That was convicting. The ark being completed, whoa, that was convicting. Then Noah and his family pack everything up out of their house, took all their shoes, all their clothes, all their food, and they moved out into the ark, told everybody goodbye. No doubt they went by their cousins, went by uncles, aunts, whoever else it was. Now, mind you, Noah got a very spiritual background. You go back just a few years and you got his great grandfather who was so holy. Y'all remember he didn't see death? You know, Lamech and then Enoch, you know? So you go back, Lamech's grandfather, Enoch, and remember, grandfathers back then didn't live 60, 70, 80 years. They lived a long time. So they, no doubt, influenced generations to come. So here, they go and they're telling all, these are saints' children, so to speak. And they're telling the generate, all right, y'all, we'll see y'all. It's time, God told us to go in. Y'all coming? All our stuff is packed. We live a holy and a righteous life. You've not seen anything in our life. You've not saw a single thing in our life. Nothing that is amiss. You've never seen us get out of swords at a club or treat our wife wrong or anywhere on our job, anybody that you ever talk to. It's not a speck. Nobody will say, I've ever seen them with a woman. I've never seen them uh, 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 curse words or, or steal or it, I've never seen, I've never seen it. They lived Sister Noah respected her husband and he loved his wife and they were great people and they lived holy and righteous and he was perfect. So you know that had conviction. They're all. See y'all later. There's no doubt. They probably went with a straight sh shot saying, I won't be seeing y'all again. No doubt the last time, come on, man, this is room. Just come on. Well, I ain't got nothing. I, don't worry about packing, man. Where my, you can wear my clothes. Don't worry about it. Just come on, man. Just cousin, cuz, come on. Come on, man. We getting on. After all the preaching, personal goodbyes, the ark is done. Watch this. Keep reading, brother Frank. Verse 7. And Noah went in, and his sons and his wives and his sons' wives with him, 
into the ark because the waters of the flood mm -hmm. of clean beasts and the beasts that were not clean and the fowls of, and, and of everything that creepeth upon the earth. There went in two and two unto, unto Noah into the ark, male and female, as God had commanded Noah. Hold and on, he, hold on, hold on, hold on. After priest for 100 years, personal goodbyes pleading, no doubt, art completed on top of all of that, just as he was preaching, saying two of every animal in the world going to come here and get on this ark. Seven of the clean beasts is coming. Files going to come from all over. You're going to see elephants. You're going to see giraffes. You're going to see like... <laughs> They're not even on this spot. You're going to see bear. You're going to see lizard. You're going to see, this man is crazy. After all of that, they're sitting on their porches, walking down to the marketplace, and here comes elephants, two by two, walking down the street, just as Noah said. Then rhinoceros coming just a few moments later, just as he said. Then two bears show up. Just as he said, then two giraffes show up. Just at some point, somewhere, something should have triggered somewhere. Some point, somebody should have went home and packed. At some point, somebody should have made a move. But after all of that, when the bad, bad, oink, 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 move, move, gloom, gloom, gloom. After all of that, not a single person, it seemed that somebody would have ran to the altar. After that message, see, Jesus said, if you don't believe my word, then believe me for my, come on, you get, get that. He said, if you don't believe my word for a hundred years, my word is going out. But now my works is going out. Nobody could do this. My works is doing this. I'm demonstrating my power. Not oh a single person stopped it getting high. Not a single family. Saints children. Try it today. Go to your siblings. Go to your cousins. Try to speak to them. Preach the everlasting gospel and see what the altar would be like. You will be sitting there and thinking, just a few years ago, this would be packed. It wouldn't be no room at the altar. At a few years ago, hearts was tender. But right before he comes back, preach what you want to preach. Let happen what it want to happen. Let get bullets fly by the head. Car accidents. Almost overdose. It don't matter. I'm not moving. I'm not getting saved. The word or the works of mercy. This was mercy. This was God's mercy trying his best to get a hold of their attentions. He said, you want to know before I come back? You're going to see. Let me just say this. Anybody getting saved today? Saints, that's when you might need to shout a little bit more. That's a miracle. I'm not talking about somebody saying, yeah, uh, 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 I want to invite God to my, and then you don't see him again. Or they really don't know what they did. I'm saying if you see somebody get saved for real, I mean real godly sorrow with brokenness, contrition, letting go, you ain't got to tell them to go to church, you ain't got to tell them to start dressing right, you ain't got to tell them to get rid of stuff, you ain't got to tell them I got to let the boyfriends go, you ain't got to tell them to stop getting high, you ain't got to tell them to have a devotion, you ain't got to drag them to church. But they get saved for real. They get real Holy Ghost saved. You see them in there having a devotion. You see them cleaning their wardrobe out. You see them throwing away songs and rap music and this, that, and the other. You see them on their way to church. They're looking forward to Bible. Saints, that's a miracle. That's a miracle. That's what he said. If you want to know, you're going to see. It's going to be like the days of Noah. The signs unrestrained morality it's going to be constantly involved not a group not a segment just all over the place you're going to just see it 
just nonstop. And it's not going to be something. Somebody said that one time. They said a uh, gentleman who got involved with the uh, crack uh, cocaine epidemic, he said that he said that they would go on binges. They would go, actually one guy he used to get high with owned a car dealership down the street. And he said that we would go and we'd get some and we would go and then they may not do it for a week or two. But then they'll go back and they'll be locked up all weekend. But today, man, people get high every day. <laughs> they do it for lunch. It's just like, for, it's, it's, just, it's just continually, it's continually. Then, unresponsive spiritually. Saints, you can take the book and you can explain with all the unction you possess, praying and fasting with a heavy burden down to the church, just seeking God and explaining as we were today. God can deliver you and keep you free from sin with victory in your soul. The response to light, to truth. It's just spiritual responses are fewer and fewer. I'm coming in. I'm coming in. You could preach the everlasting gospel back in the day. Pastor Hampton, get an opportunity, be at a little school building, southwest Detroit somewhere or down at uh, Burlington in that area of the state. And he's preaching the gospel of what the church is and how the saints should be today in seeking God. And then he goes a step further and he'll say how there's been a deviation of how things used to be. Hearts were so tender, they were convicted because they knew he's saying the truth. We all know we doing stuff we ain't used to do. We're seeing stuff in the church that didn't used to be in the church. We're seeing preachers doing stuff and wearing stuff and their wives wearing stuff because she thinks she can get away with it that their wives didn't used to wear. And he would preach the gospel and many times people took a stand. Saints, today, Preach how you want to preach. Explain how you want to explain it. Say, get the old books out. Show in the old books. This just used to be a part of the church of God. In fact, some of the same people that's doing stuff now used to didn't do it. Some of the same people. I was telling my son that the other night. He's going through all the archives of the preachers and said the other. And I was just saying that, you know, that message he just preached there, talking about the church and what it was and what it was not and what a minister was, what it was not, what it shouldn't be, this, that, and the other. That same minister right now, it got in his pulpit. People just doing what he just said. Send him that tape, and he would just, man, hearts, you can't convict people no more. You're thinking, and I'm going to hit you, I'm going a little bit closer. Sometimes we would sit there and say, Lord, shut the mouths of the gangs here. We want you to do it. Saints, I'm going to be honest with you. You can pray that prayer if you want to, but to be honest with you, God, in today's age, you ain't shutting the mouths of the gangs here. God can do whatever he want to do and they'll still talk. The best thing is God do this because this saint is in need of it. God do this to keep our faith inspired. But this stuff about shutting my, saying their hearts are so strong today, and I can be very, very personal. I'm thinking that they were attacking this, the saint about trusting God, attacking. God came through with miraculously, undeniable, Sister wouldn't budge, wouldn't go nowhere, just it looks like death was imminent, stood, this, that, and the other, because some of the family called me personally, attacked me, and just bombarded me. I don't know why people think that I am the issue today. <laughs> Literally, they think that if I would just shift, everything would be good. It, oh, if you just, just, just you, you the problem just like your daddy. Did you the, seriously? I'm not leading these people, God is leading them. If I'm out the way, they're going to stand. It ain't My about God. a man. Amen. It's about Amen. God. It's about principle. Amen. They're not following a man. That's right. My Lord, God moved me out the way. Three more stronger would rise up. My Lord. Please, this ain't about no person. Don't go every. Don't get it twisted. But 
called, went up one side of me, down another, wanted me to convince them that they need to go do this, and they, this person up under my persuasion and delusion, and I'm killing them. Just think, just, if y'all knew the stuff, the calls that I get, it, seriously? There's nobody telling nobody you gotta trust God, you better, please. If your faith is there, we're going to rally. If your faith is not there, okay, we're going to pray for you. It's no issue. We, I ain't got no heaven or hell to put you in. We ain't never put nobody in heaven or hell over divine healing or nothing else. Please, but we got a gospel. And amen, if God inspired their faith, amen, right. we're going to rally with them. That's right, brother. We're going to pray for them. Amen. amen. And if she wants to stand, I'm standing with her. Amen. And I'm we not going to call brother. her, tell her to do what you want her to do. Because if her faith is there and God has convicted her, she can mess around and get some confusion going off into the judgment. My Lord. So I'm not going to call her and try to convince her. Amen. Days later, days later, God, boom. Undeniable, instantaneous, boom, call. It's done, it's over, glory, glory. Not a single one, not a single one would say nothing, would back up and say, wow, praise God, God is still moving. God, there ain't, it hurts. God can perform now. That's what I'm gonna tell you, saints. To get somebody convicted now, God can hang a person over hell. Please, can I go a step further? Preach the gospel. Preach, listen, have a stroke almost preaching the gospel. Fasting, praying all throughout the week, crying out before God, this, that, and the other. Saints, unresponsive spiritually. God could deal with and declare it through song, testimony, through the word. A person will sit here. How many saints do you see now going to the altars? Seeking God. You could preach on prayer life. You could, I'm just being real with you. If you ain't careful. My God. You could preach on talking. I said one time the brother would preach, got up and preach the message and talk. Sister said, you know what? I'm going to write down every word I say from now on. Just that sensitive. You can preach on, 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 on consecration. Like they were singing a song the other day. Since Jesus gave his life for me. Said, I, sometimes there wasn't even no need for no preaching. They just sung that song. Saints, I need to go to another level. Preach on service attendance. Preach on just, just, just being committed. Today? If you are sensitive to where you feel a check if you say something that you, I got to be careful with that. You feel conviction if you get too caught up in the things of this world. You feel it when it's time to stop. I'll be at home when I was younger, maybe out dealing with some wood, like working with some wood or in here dyeing some shoe or whatever. Stop in the middle of it. You know, some shit. Then it got to a point that thing convicted me, even thinking about it. He's reading the paper. And he said, no, this is, I almost remember the day. He said, no, I'm not getting the paper no more. That how sensitive he felt God taking him to another level. Time wasters. I ain't praying that much. I can't be all on this line or on that line. If I ain't careful, I'm looking at this and looking at it. No. Saints, if you feel and you can go to a service and the gospel goes forth and you do self-examination, and you just want to be tender. Man, people can pick up stuff that God told them don't do, and they start back doing it. It's fine. God dealt with you about that. He told you, dang, to my glory, and you were close to him. You stopped doing it. But then you got caught up. You lost a little fervor. You start back doing it again. You felt bad. I remember, man, I felt so convicted because I came from the athletic world. In the athletic world, especially if they paying you, they paying for you, through your, so people say that you pro when they pay you, yeah? They will give us checks after the game. That was another phase of my life. But also, you basically pro when you sign a scholarship because they basically are paying for They say, okay, this time, you be here. You don't be there at that time. You be there before that time, Chippewa time. You be there before that time, so you ready at that time. I got saved. 
I'm thinking this is just me. I get saved, man. God bless me, save my soul. I go forward. Amen. That day, night came back to church. I'm coming to service. I sit in my mind. It's church time. I gotta be there. And I gotta be on time. This is just me. Felt conviction. I said, then I saw other, I said, they, they been in it longer than me. That's brother so-and-so. They ain't. So I guess it ain't that important. The Holy Ghost could convict me. He said, I'm not going to send you to hell for, for missing the service. I'm not going to send you to hell for being late to church. But I'm going to roll back the curtain, though. I remember you and how you was committed to them folk. How you was careful with them folk. You was there, ready, rallying the troops. We was, all I'm asking you, because if you did it then, you demonstrated you're capable, that you do got to watch. You can get up. You, you can negotiate your schedule. Just don't give me any less. It's two camps. It's two camps. You're in a different camp now. Don't give me nothing less than you get that camp. Saints, it convicted me. And I just said, I received that. I'm not watching nobody else. This ain't about, no, I'm not even condemning nobody else because you can mess around and get prideful. You can mess around and look around and see, I'm the only one. So I think, please, please, don't, you don't judge after you don't compare yourself among yourself. You don't know their story. They, they, they could be dealing with whatever. You don't even know that. But as for me, that's sensitive. And I said, Lord, I don't ever want to lose that. I don't ever want to get so saved and so sanctified that, hey, that's no big deal. But this is a prevailing sign. Go to meetings even. I'm telling you, to find sensitive people spiritually, responsive hearts that God can convict, move up, get saved, take a stand, stop don't deviate, come up higher. So that is a witness. And that is far as we'll get tonight. But a great witness, not 100 years ago, but an even. And when I say responsive, that's not even talking about conviction. That's talking about the whole element of responsiveness. We're living in a day and age, it said, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. What I mean by that is, it was, I would listen to the, uh, they got the 82 revival. So I would listen to the 82 revival today. And before Brother Brown preached, it was a basic song. Uh, Might have been, I'll never go back, or what is a basic song? The song leaders, they were so responsive to the song leader. They were so responsive to the choir. It was like melee. They were like, oh, I never go back. It was just, I'm, I'm listening to what's said, and I'm there. So I'm not talking about even conviction. I'm saying any element of spiritual response where I feel the inspiration coming up over me to worship God. I'm thankful for what he did. It's some of the song leaders say, Brother Lee, you look out today. I'm not necessarily talking about this congregation. No. Sister Credit, don't laugh at me, Sister Credit. Amen. I'm not necessarily, I said necessarily, so I'm trying to be even. Amen. They say, Brother Lee, it's hard. So we have to don't look at their faces. Go forth anyway. Maybe it's taking place inside, down in their soul. Maybe it's not on the outside. But my point is, is that it's not just from an altar call. Saints, if you are spiritually responsive anyway, if you can sense they sing a brighter days are sweet, and you can just feel the inspiration, forward, forward is the best, and you feel like we're warriors. You're responding to the inspiration of that song, and it's happening. Don't you let nobody shut you up. Don't you let nobody. You are a rarity. If you really feel, I'm not talking about emotionalism. I'm saying in your heart of heart, you are sitting there crying and worshiping God. Rainy, sweetly rainy, far above this world of sin. 
sin. Amen. Shall we then by sin be humble? Must we yield to any fool? No, by hell. You feel that. Nobody worked it up in you. You feel it. Why is it powerful? Because iniquity is abounding. There's a coldness everywhere. There's busyness everywhere. But if you sincerely in your soul, you are sensitive that God can get you up in the morning. Go and pray, son. And you actually go pray. God can might go convict you about something. And you hold on to that conviction. You don't let it go. Why? Because it's you and God. It's personal. From beginning to end, personal devotion to devotional phase of the service to the end of the service. If you are sensitive spiritually, the sister was saying on the morning call the other day, somebody could be in the house talking too much and you are spiritually sensitive enough. That's not edifying. Oh, Sister Green, that's not edifying. That's not edifying. I can't partake in that. They're going to dog me up. I don't care. I feel something. I feel something ain't right. I don't feel that. So one of the signs, or the first one, he said, nobody knows the days nor hour. But he said, I can't tell you the time, but I can tell you the signs. The first sign he mentioned, he said, go and look at the days of Noah. The days of Noah had two prevailing things that jump out at you. One is unrestrained morality. Eating, drinking, not that they were wrong, but they went so far with it. Drunkenness, highness, just lewdness, just continually, nonstop, a generation in which that becomes a norm. I'm on my way back. And also, unresponsive spiritually. <clears throat> preach what you want to preach, how you want to preach it, word or action, they're not responding. Outside the church, inside, all could be affected by a lack of spiritual response. That's happening today. Somebody said a few years ago, at a meeting, at a service, altar, packed, people getting saved. Now, all those visitors, and this is where it gets dangerous, some will come up with prayer, but not make that next step. Y'all get that? That shows that there's some hope. There's some hope. They'll come up with prayer, but that next step is very difficult. That's letting you know it's time. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your goodness and faithfulness. We thank you, dear God, for your word. It's a light and it's a lamp. Father, we thank you for your divine mercy. You care about us. You care about your creation. Father, it is not your will that any should perish. Father, you don't want, it's not like, Lord, you're, 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 you're waiting to a moment where nobody's thinking about it and you, like, you're trying to catch us by surprise. It's the opposite. You're trying to let us know clearly by all means possible so that everybody can be ready. We pray all those under the sound of our voice. Father to God would be considerate of indulgence in the sins of this world. Father, if a deliverance is needed, we pray tonight that we will cry out to God and say, Lord, deliver me. Break the chains. Set me free, Lord. Father, we pray, dear God, for hearts to be tenderized, to be open to receiving a word from the Lord. And Father, we pray you help us to also pray for spiritual sensitivity. We want to hear when Jesus, when God speaks, we want to get our portion. We want to be sensitive enough to seek our portion and heart tender enough to apply it, to receive it. Father, we don't want to compare ourselves to nobody else, but this is all about us individually. Help us to be spiritually responsive. If it's encouragement, if it's the devotional phase of the service, Father, if it's at home, when God tells us, go and pray or be quiet or uh, whatever, we want to be spiritually responsive to the moving of the spirit. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus name we pray. Amen.
Uh, we're going to go ahead and let you out a little bit early tonight. If there's anything, any confirmation, you can make it. Any words you would like to share regarding the Bible study tonight concerning the signs of his coming. The first one that he mentioned after he said, nobody knows. He said, it'll be like the days of Noah. And that's what we covered in this first point. All right, shall we stand? If anybody want to be saved tonight, anybody want special prayer tonight, we'll make ourselves available. And there are those available if you'd like to call in or desire special prayer. Those are standing by that will pray with you. You can be saved tonight. You can get on the ark tonight. Amen. Some, some, some giraffes walk tonight. Come on. Amen. Some monkeys walk tonight. Amen. Thank the Lord. Some witnesses went forth tonight and they're going forth all around our lands. Let's be responsive. All right. Tomorrow. Is it? No. It's not. Or is. Somebody help me out. It's first and third. Our church come together to pray for the congregation. Saturday. Is tomorrow the first Saturday? Is it? Well, praise the Lord. All right. We'll be here at six. Those that are able. Those that are able will be here at six. Oh, you know it's confusing because we did it last time. We did it last week because of the uh, because of uh, because of um, the Sunday coming up. So we did it on the call. All right, so we'll be in person here tomorrow at six. Those that are available, we know we push you all to a great extent, but those that can help us out, we'll pray. All right, we're gonna look to God in prayer. I do want to announce next Sunday we won't be here, <clears throat> and you all will handle the service. We ask you all to support it. We'll be in Columbus, Georgia conducting an ordinance service for the saints there. So we ask you to pray for us, but we are having service as normal. It will be no, uh, not affecting our services at all. Also, some Haitian immigrants have been coming to the Ohio, especially Central Ohio area, and they've been attending the congregation there in Springfield. So Brother Eddie, he grew up in Haiti, he speaks Haitian, hasn't spoken in a while, but he's going down to speak to that community next weekend as well, he did ask that, he said, have the saints pray for me because I've not spoken this language in like 40 or 50 years. And preaching is difficult. You know, you may have a little conversation, but preaching, you gotta think on your feet, and leave your notes. So pray for him that God will give him, I don't know if he need the gift of tongues because he does know it. He may need just a quickening of his tongue. <laughs> a quickening of his tongue that God would help him with his memory as well. All right, anything else for good of the order? You all have been amazing, amen. Thank the Lord. Let's look to God in prayer. Sister Rosetta, you've been doing a magnanimous job helping out the saints. If you wouldn't mind praying for us, amen. Our dismissal, I'd appreciate it. Love you, saints. Appreciate you so much. Father, we thank you tonight, dear Lord God, for this Bible service, dear God, this study, dear God. We thank you so much in Jesus' name, dear Lord God, for how you promised, Father God, that the end would come, dear Lord God, and Lord. how you've been merciful to us, Father God, thank to you, Lord, tell us the, the signs of it, dear Lord My God. Lord. Father God, we thank you so thank much for giving us, us ears to hear, dear God, and thank, thank you, you for quickening our thoughts, dear Lord Father, God, world and we're living in. keeping We've our vision like clear, this. dear Lord God, and never Father God, for showing us, this. dear God, what to do, Lord God, how to prepare, dear Lord God. Father, we appreciate you, Lord God. Our heart says, Be I'm into your will. Ready. Father, dear God, have your merciful way. We love you, and we appreciate you. Bless all those that couldn't come, Lord God. Sick in their bodies, Father God. Remember them, Lord God. Give us traveling grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless you, saints.